Last time I showed you how to hack a server with Metasploit. And using Metasploit, we managed to take over a vulnerable FTP service to gain admin privileges on the machine. Today, we'll dig deeper in the world of Metasploit and discover three new hacking techniques on three different targets. Now let's get started with our first victim. Machine 1, a vulnerable Windows server. In front of us, we have a Windows machine that is not accessible through web, but we have its IP address, so we do as we always do. We start by an Nmap scan. We see that this machine has many open ports, and I am interested in the ports 445 and 139 because Windows machines usually have vulnerabilities on these ports. So we launch a deeper scan specifically targeted to these two ports to confirm that we are indeed targeting an SMB service. As a result, the second scan confirms that we have a Windows machine and the port 445 is indeed an SMB service. So we launch our Metasploit console to find any auxiliaries that can confirm if this port is vulnerable or not to certain attacks. Before we do that, let me explain what an auxiliary is. A Metasploit auxiliary module is a component of the Metasploit framework. Auxiliary modules in Metasploit serve various purposes but are primarily designed to perform tasks other than exploitation. They provide additional functionalities that can aid in information gathering, reconnaissance, exploitation preparation, or even post-exploitation activities. In other words, they can scan networks to identify live hosts, open ports, or services running on those ports. They can gather information about the operating system, software versions, and configurations of target systems and they can check for known vulnerabilities in target systems by attempting specific attack. With that being said, let's get back to Metasploit and start by searching SMB and adding a type colon auxiliary to the end of our search request. As you can see, we have many auxiliary modules specifically made for SMB service. After testing many of these services, I already know that this specific SMB service is vulnerable to a remote code execution vulnerability, also known as MS-17010. So we are going to use that module to confirm that this specific service is vulnerable to MS-17010 remote code execution. We type the command use auxiliary slash scanner slash SMB slash SMB MS-17010. After that, we type options to see what we need to configure to run the module. In this case, the only two things that we need to configure is the R hosts and the R port options. As explained before, the R hosts is the target machine and the R port is the service that we are targeting on that machine. So we just add our host's IP address and then type run to execute the module. Immediately, we can see that Metasploit tells us that the host is vulnerable to MS-17010. After that confirmation, we launch another search but this time, we are searching for exploit modules for the SMB service. As you can see, there are many exploits available, but we are interested in only MIS 17010. So, we add that to our search and try again. Now in the second search, we find our exact exploit that we're looking for, so we type the use command and the name of the exploit. As usual, we take a look at the options that we need to configure. In this case, we need to configure the target's host and port and our listening host port. In this case, a listening host and port are crucial because when we run the exploit, the victim server will try to connect to a server for a reverse TCP connection. This connection will allow us to control the server remotely. In simpler terms, a reverse TCP connection is a type of network connection established between a compromised target system and an attacker-controlled system. In this setup, the attacker system acts as the listener, waiting for incoming connections, while the compromised target system initiates the connection back to the attacker system. Once the connection is established, the attacker gains a level of control over the compromised system, allowing them to execute commands, transfer files, or perform other malicious activities, hence the name remote code execution. After configuring our options, we run the attack, and we can see that Metasploit has successfully gained us a reverse shell, and now, we have a meter printer session opened on the victim server. A meter printer session is a communication link between an attacker system and a compromised target, typically established after successful exploitation using a meter printer payload. 
This session grants the attacker an advanced command line interface to remotely control the compromised system. Leveraging various post-exploitation capabilities, including file manipulation, privilege escalation, network reconnaissance, and more, MeterPreter allows attackers to maintain persistent access, gather sensitive data, or execute further attacks. Its stealthy operation in memory and potential for persistence make MeterPreter sessions a favored tool in offensive security operations for penetration testing and ethical hacking purposes. Before we move on, I just need you to keep this in mind. Hacking someone without authorization from the owner will have serious legal consequences, potentially leading to imprisonment and fines. It is crucial to refrain from exploiting vulnerabilities without explicit permission. Instead, I strongly advise you to report any identified vulnerabilities to the owner. This will not only contribute to making you gain reputation, but also offers the opportunity to earn money or bounties. Machine 2, Vulnerable WordPress Plugin. In the second example, we have a WordPress website. There has a vulnerable plugin called WP File Manager. It's a plugin designed to provide website administrators with an easy to use interface for managing files and directories directly within the WordPress dashboard. It enables users to upload, delete, edit, copy, and move files and folders on their WordPress website's server. This plugin happens to be vulnerable to a known vulnerability that leads to remote code execution as well. We're not going to go into the details of the technicality of the vulnerability, but this vulnerable version of the plugin allows us to upload an arbitrary file to of the victim server without needing to be authenticated to the application. So we go back to our good old friend, Metasploit, and we'll launch a new search as always. This time we're looking for the WP File Manager Remote Code's Execution Exploit Module. As you can see, we have an exploit named WP File Manager RCE, which is exactly what we are looking for. So we select the module using the use command and we take a look at our options. As always, nothing special. We just need to configure the victim host and port and our listening host and port. Here, I made a mistake because I set the listening host to localhost, which should not be done on Metasploit, even though the victim is on my own machine. Instead, my listening IP address should be set to the address of any other interface apart from the loopback interface. After fixing the issue, I ran the exploit. Metasploit informs us that the target is indeed vulnerable, and it says that a meterpreter session has been opened. For some reason, Metasploit did not open the session immediately, but instead put it in the background, but that is not an issue. We just need to take a look at our open sessions by using the sessions command. As you can see, we have two meterpreter sessions that have been opened for the WordPress vulnerable website. So to interact with one of the sessions, we just type sessions tac i and the number of the session. This works just fine, and now I have taken control of the server. If you do not like meterpreter, you can just open a shell just by typing the shell command. And from here, you can continue exploring the contents of the victim server. Machine 3, arbitrary file upload. In this final vulnerability, I would like to show you how we can use Metasploit along with the file upload vulnerability on the website. So on this website, we have a file upload functionality. Supposedly, we can only upload images. So we start by testing it out and upload a legitimate image. Now, when going to the upload directory, we can see that our image has indeed been uploaded. Now, what happens if you try to upload a another type of file? For example, let's upload a PHP script. This is just a small PHP script that contains a single command, which is an echo. The only purpose of this script is just to confirm that the PHP code will execute once the file is opened on the website. So we go ahead and upload that, and we can see that the upload is successful. And when we open the file on the website, we can indeed see that the code has been executed. So now that we have validated that we can execute code on the website, we can move on to our next step, which is to craft a new payload. We can do that using a tool called MSF Venom. MSF Venom is a part of the Metasploit framework, specifically a versatile tool for generating custom payloads for exploitation. These payloads can be used in various types of attacks, including penetration testing 
and ethical hacking scenarios. MSF Venom allows users to craft payloads tailored to specific targets and objectives, such as creating executable files, shellcode, or encoded payloads. It supports multiple output formats and architectures, making it a flexible tool for generating payloads designed to exploit vulnerabilities in target systems. And a payload refers to the part of an exploit or malware that performs the intended malicious actions on a target system. It's the code or instructions that execute after the initial exploitation phase. In the context of an exploit, the payload might involve injecting code into a vulnerable application or system to gain unauthorized access, escalate privileges, or perform other malicious activities. So to start crafting our payload, we're going to use the MSF Venom command, we add a TAC P to specify what type of payload it is, and then we add PHP slash Metropreter reverse TCP because the website is coded in PHP and we would like to connect as a Metapreter session using Metasploit. And then we have the host and the port, which are going to be our listening ports on our attacking machine. The final option specifies the output format of the generated payload as raw binary data. When you use TACF raw, MSF Venom will produce the payload in its raw binary form without any additional headers or formatting. And then we output the payload in a PHP file. Now we fire up Metasploit and set up our listener. To do that, we're going to use Metasploit's exploit multi-handler. The Metasploit Framework's exploit multi-handler is a module designed to listen for incoming connections from exploited systems. It acts as a handler for multiple types of payloads and exploits. When an attacker successfully exploits a vulnerability on a target system using a Metasploit payload, the exploited system attempts to connect back to the multi-handler module running on the attacker's machine. To use that module, we simply type the use exploit multi-handler command. We set up the listening options exactly as we set them during the creation of the payload, so we need to use the same address and the same port for this to work. And then we run our listener and we wait for incoming connections. We go back to our website and upload the payload. After the successful upload, we execute the file that we just uploaded. We see that a new meter preter session is opened in Metasploit. And as simple as that, we have a session on the server and we have taken control. You seem to be a fan of pen testing since you are still watching. So here's another pen testing video that will teach you something else about becoming a better hacker.